Hi everyone, it's Kirsty here. It's been a while since I've um, posted and I thought I'd catch you guys up with what I've been doing. Um, this may be a couple of videos depending on how long <laughs> I ramble on for. Um, so the first thing that we've been doing is um, obviously we got through Christmas and New Year's which was pretty quiet for us. And then we had our son's wedding in early February. And there was a lot of prep before, you know, for me as an amputee, before um, that wedding. I really wanted to dance with my son at his wedding, uh, which didn't happen <laughs> on the day because it was just too hot. Um, but the physio and the exercise and the balancing and, and all of that sort of stuff definitely helped me get through um, a big week and a big day. So we, um, I'm a nail tech as well as a software designer, so I do nails. And um, I had sort of booked myself up for most of that week doing friends and family. Um, and a couple of clients, nails, and then the day before I was also the MC for the wedding, um, the Master of Ceremonies, so um, the wedding was like a an hour and a half's drive away from where we live, uh, so we headed up there to organise, you know, timing and things like that so that I could, you know, do all my MC duties um, and see my son and his then fiance um the day before their wedding and then yeah the next day it was their wedding and it was like the hottest time of the year and even though we kind of knew that it would be hot uh and where they live is you know quite sort of central southland otago -y kind of area and it was hot and had like no humidity so it was just hot without kind of any break <laughs> in the heat and um I actually felt really bad <laughs> for the bridal party uh, my daughter was maid of honor obviously my son was the groom um <laughs> and yeah they had their photos earlier in the day probably a good move um because it only got hotter as the day went on and the wedding was late in the um afternoon uh, it was a beautiful ceremony and um, yeah, the couple were just stunning. Um, the whole wedding party was stunning, but my son and his bride were um, just breathtaking and, you know, we're so happy to have her as part of our family now, although she's been part of our family for quite a while, I feel like. And um, although now they're officially official. And yeah, so for me, the days were, as an amputee, um, a little bit of juggling. There was a lot of sort of standing. The actual wedding ceremony was at, on a farm um, outside of front of an old farmhouse, which was very romantic and very cool. Uh, but there were uneven surfaces and I was already sort of struggling with the heat uh, in a prosthetic. So um, there was a lot of just being really mindful of where I was putting my feet and how long I was standing. And then the reception was in a um, a really big shed that housed classic cars that kind of just sort of trapped the heat as well and again as an MC you're sort of up and down a little bit um and yeah just sort of circulating in amongst you know the family and friends that had come for their wedding so um it was sort of got to about 10 30 and I I don't know if I would go so far as to call it in pain, but I was definitely um, exhausted by the day, by the, um, not not the day so much, but by wearing a prosthetic in that heat and, yeah, getting up and down out of my seat. 
but I was so, so pleased that I actually got through the day and was able to celebrate it with them without being in a wheelchair. I was lucky enough that I didn't have to take any medication. Um, I definitely had that option, but uh, really just wanted to be quite present during the day. Um, so I didn't have to take any pain meds. And yeah, I just really paced myself. And it's funny because when you're, I've found for me that when I'm um, experiencing any sort of intense emotion, good, bad, whatever, and this day it was definitely good, um, my nerves seem to be like, ooh, okay, so we're, we're hyper alert, hyper caught on, um, and I was getting lots and lots of feedback um, from my nerves, but oh, it is so hard to describe. It's not like pain how I think of pain like pre-amputation, you know, the pain that I was in was, you know, kind of mind-consuming. I could switch off from the sensations with the nerve feedback. I get, it's sort of like mild pins and needles, sort of, or that slightly um, gone to sleep feeling in your leg before it gets painful. Um, so it's kind of there in the background and it does just get a little bit wearying on you because you're there able to focus on things, but it's just kind of humming around in the background. And I'm sure that other amputees have similar experiences. I know other people in just, you know, chronic pain have that sort of experience. Um, but yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. And I felt really good afterwards. We went back up there again the next day. So it was a really full on, you know, like there's travel. Um, there's the emotional aspect as, you know, being the mom. <laughs> um, and yeah, just for me, it's even sometimes difficult for me to be like with people, especially people that I don't know. Um I have a tendency to sort of borrow trouble in that I think people are going to notice that I'm an amputee and that with noticing that I'm an amputee, they're also going to ask questions. And it's during this event, this was not really the case. Um, I'm sure people noticed I was wearing a dress. Um, so, you know, the socket and the different leg and every uh, different foot was, you know, noticeable. But um Nobody really asked any questions. Um, everybody was obviously correctly focused on the bride and groom. Um, and yeah, it was it was just a really good day and good people. And I was able to, you know, drop my guard down a little bit and interact with people a bit more than I normally would as an amputee. So the things that I did to kind of prepare for the day so that I could be in my socket is obviously wearing it um, more and more over a period of time. So I probably started getting ready a good six months before the wedding of increasing the amount of time that I could spend in my socket, um, working with the limb center to get my socket fitted as, you know, as good as we could before the wedding. And we didn't make any changes to the feet or anything like that in terms of, you know, what the foot could or couldn't do. So obviously there's more you know, technolog technologically advanced feet. Um, I just kept to my, the one that I was used to. Okay, so I started wearing my leg, or my leg, my prosthetic more. <laughs> and um, I was also practicing with uh, my physio and a yoga instructor on balancing on one leg, dancing around in my living room um, to different music walking one foot in front of the another in a straight line um you know keeping my head up when I'm walking because I because I've had an injury for such a long time I've looked at my feet for like two decades to make sure that I'm sitting them on something stable um so to help with my posture and just the appearance that you you know you've got this under control you kind of got to keep your head up and just trust that the foot and things are going to and your body is going to handle it. So quite often um, with, you know, like on farms and in the grass and things like that, there'd be like a dip 
Um, and in the foot that I've got, which doesn't have any kind of movement in the ankle that kind of really copes with that dip, it kind of throws my whole body forward. Um, and I look like I'm about to sort of trip, but my muscles have, I've been practicing enough on uneven surfaces that my muscles can kind of just halt that whole tipping forward thing and I can stay upright. So, um, so that was really good because I really needed to, you know, that sort of re self reassurance that my body could handle those, um, those circumstances, those, you know, those ground conditions. I think on an emotional level, um, it was, as a parent, there is this, you know, sense of pride, um, a feeling of welcoming uh, a new member into our family, formally. Like I said, she's been part of our family for quite a while. Um, there's, there was a slight, a very slight panic that they're too young. Um, and that was like the day before the wedding. Um, but they're both, um, you know, they know their own minds and they know their own hearts. And, you know, life is for living in the moments. And I decided to sort of employ that in how I approached the day as well and that I lived in the moment with them and just thoroughly enjoyed, you know, watching them celebrate their day and celebrate their commitment to each other. Um, and I think that everybody that did go to the wedding was of similar sort of mindset as well. So that was really cool. It was cool to share that energy um, with a bunch of people. To cope with the heat, um, and for us, it's like 33 degrees uh, Celsius, I think it is, is that we use it? Um, so that's warm down here. Um, I was using an aluminium spray um, as an antiperspirant in, on my leg, but I did need to um, reapply it more than once. And I have an allergic reaction to it, so I have to use it very sparingly and only do I ever use it when I'm going to be getting quite hot and damp. And the sensation is actually, you know, when you're sweating, it's actually pretty gross um, because it feels like, and it sometimes is, like, you know, pulling into the inner liner of your leg. <laughs> um, and that's super distracting and... Uh, yeah, just generally pretty gross. Um, but, you know, like on the plus side, you know, I didn't feel any of the sharp grass or anything that was in the paddock. I didn't, you know, I don't worry about like stepping on sharp stones <laughs> and things like that. So it was, it was, you know, there are pluses. <laughs> and I was able to be there. Um, that's a massive takeaway for me. Had I not had this amputation, I wouldn't have been able to cope with the pain. Um, I would have definitely been in a wheelchair, if not even just not able to do it. Um, before my amputation, I had gotten to the point where focusing on my on my work, which I love, was um, just about impossible. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a plus side to being an amputee with in regards to that, and you know. I mean, you've got to put the work in. You've got to, you know, make the effort to get accustomed to being on your leg, wearing your leg. And, yeah, just, just testing um, yourself and your body will get you um, to a place where you can, you know, participate in big family events that are all day on your feet. <laughs> um, well, that's not entirely true. There was definitely sitting. There was time to eat and, yeah, um, stuff like that. So it wasn't, it wasn't all bad. <laughs> it wasn't all on my feet. Um, so that was, that was one of the really big things that we did. Um, and then following that, and I will put it in a different email, um, a different email. Oh my goodness. <sighs> We're dog sitting at the moment for our daughter. And, um, whilst we have three of our own dogs, none of them sleep on the bed with us. And her, our daughter's dog sleeps not on the bed but expects to be in the bed with us and um we've really struggled to sleep around a dog and 
if she doesn't, she actually like sits outside our bedroom door and cries. <laughs> So, and that just breaks my heart. I couldn't do it. I had to let her in um, in the middle of the night. So, um, yeah, we we're pretty tired, and my brain's just like, "What? What are you trying to say? I know you have a, I know you have a point." Um, um, also, on that note, you know, I've noticed the past few days where whilst we've had this dog staying with us and not getting enough sleep, is that. Um, that also seems to have fired off my nerves quite a lot, you know, the lack of sleep. I've definitely, definitely not had um, the same level of comfort that I normally have in my prosthetic. Uh, but yeah, I'm managing that with, I still have gabapentin every night, just, just to kind of keep that nerve feedback under control. And... Um, yeah, the last couple of days I've been using anti-inflammatories as well. Uh, so anyway, the other things that sort of followed the wedding, obviously there was, we got ready for a couple of days to go on holiday and we went to Fiji and that's a video all on its own. And then the day after we got home from Fiji, we had our daughter's 21st birthday party. So she turned 21 a month ago but um, she decided to have an actual party party and we uh, joined in and that's when I got my dancing in. I, over a two hour period, got up and danced a few times with a bunch of 21 year olds. Uh, I did spend the next day in my wheelchair, I had overdone it, but there was just a, a massive sense of achievement to have, you know, had the courage to get up and dance to, um, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I mean, I probably made a complete muppet of myself, but I had just so much fun. And um, I'm so glad that I had put in all of that time and practiced for it so that I was actually able to do it. It's funny because, you know, all of the amputees that I follow and some of them that I know, in, you know, in person and in real life, they all have, um, you know, this amazing ability to live, you know, as para athletes or, um, you know, these massive, you know, climbing mountains, running marathons and triathlons and all those sorts of things, you know, that, and I've often felt quite, um, the underachiever in my recovery and in my, uh, goals that I have set, but I'll be honest, you know, nailing in the matter of, you know, three weeks time, you know, a wedding, a holiday, an overseas holiday and a 21st birthday party, um, being involved in the moment, being present, being active, uh, enjoying myself and other people's company, um, that's massive. And I am like so, so pleased that I am at a point in my recovery that this is even possible. Like sometimes it's just the normal things, the little things that are the biggest challenges and have the most rewards when you get through them. Absolutely. So on this note, I am going to finish up this um, video and I will record another one in the next couple of days and go all about our holiday in Fiji and the things that I had to overcome and how I did it. Uh, and yeah, I can show some photos and stuff like that. So it's going to be a fun video. Uh, I look forward to, um, you know, hearing any of your experiences with big family events. And I would really love it if you could please like this video and consider subscribing. I hope you have an amazing day. We'll see you later. Bye.